Hello everyone and welcome to another video with Johnny Thunder. Uh, in this tutorial we're going to cover installing and using Linux. Um, I've been using Linux for the last year. Uh, I was actually going to make this video about a year ago, uh, but I'm actually kind of glad I didn't because there was a bunch of things I've learned in the last year that um, I could add. So, um, to little fr frustrations that I've had, um, that I figured out how to deal with. Um, so I wanted to make this video for, particularly for gamers, um, who are coming from Windows. Uh, I used to be a Windows power user before switching to Linux. And, uh, I know there's certain hardships that, uh, little difficulties that, um, one encounters when they switch to Linux. And I'm hoping with this tutorial to uh, smooth those things out and help you. Uh, this video is going to be primarily focused on Linux Mint. It's the operating system that I use. Um, and so because I've used it, I know these little idiosync idiosyncrasies that, um, that, uh, most users are that you will, will, really annoy you for a little bit until you figure out, you know, do some research and figure out how to do these things. Um, but I also, uh, if you're a new user, uh, I think Manjaro personally is a good uh, Linux distro as well. Uh, that would be my, generally my recommendation would either be Linux Mint or Manjaro, but this video is not going to focus on Manjaro. It's going to focus on Linux Mint. Um, so with that said, let's get into the installation process. Uh, to install Linux, you need to create a live USB. Um, and in order to do that, uh, the best thing to use is a program called Etcher. Uh, the beauty of Etcher is that you can get this for Windows, you can get this for Mac, and you can get this for Linux. Um, so, you know, just go to the Etcher site and download for your operating system and then when you run it uh, you will get this um so oh, i install oh, i could do two at a time interesting uh, so I want to install this on my 16 gigabyte flash drive. I will be using the 60 gigabyte hard drive that I have plugged in for this tutorial. Um, I have a bunch of different distros in here that I jump from. But the one I'm looking for, when you download Linux Mint, um, you can either do it via Torrent or their website. You should get... this on ISO. Uh, so you just, in order to make a flash drive, you select the flash drive here, you select Linux Mint, and you hit flash. And then it flashes. Yes, I guess we'll just wait for this to be done. All right, so that's completed. Um, at this point, you now have a, uh, you, you should have a USB that um, is, has Linux Mint ready to go. Um, at this point, you'll want to reboot and uh, you'll want to open your BIOS before your operating system opens. So usually that's like uh, you hit like F10 or uh, uh, escape or no escape generally it's like f10 f11 delete or f2 uh while your uh system is booting and it'll boot you into the bios um and all biases are different this is a picture of a standard uh intel type bios um and you'll want to go if you have something like this you'll want to go find the boot menu um, and then somewhere in here should be the USB stick and you'll want to select that 
and then exit and save the changes. So exit, save. Um, if you are got a gaming computer, uh, your BIOS is probably more advanced than this thing. Um, but the process is pretty much the same. You find the boot, you find uh, the removable um, USB stick, you select it, you just tell it you want to boot from that. Um, and I think you could actually just select it and boot from that and you don't have to save the changes, which might be better because typically you want to uh, boot from your hard drive. You only want to boot from your USB once. Uh, okay, so with that said, um, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm going to do this through a virtual machine. Um, let me see if I can remember how to do this. Now, 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 now. All right, I'm going to do this. I'm just going to delete it. <laughs> I can't remember how to. Uh, yeah, just delete it all. So we'll do a new uh, Linux Mint install. All right, sorry about that, everyone. Um, I had to because of the how the virtual machine works. Um, I had to go in and readjust some of the settings. I guess it wasn't having enough video memory. Um, but when you uh, plug in your drive and start up, you should be greeted with this, which is Linux Mint. And one of the nice things is that you can try Linux Mint. It comes with Firefox and various different utilities. Uh, I think Gparted's on here. Yeah, it comes with Gparted, so you can do um, partitioning uh, task, administ various administrative tasks if you wanted to do that. But uh, we are just going to install. I gave this thing four cores, so hopefully the install process shouldn't be that long. So going through the, I suppose I skipped over this a little bit too quickly. You just want to obviously select your language, English. Uh, of course, if you're watching this, I assume it's English. Uh, keyboard layout, English, English. I highly recommend installing third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, Flash, MP3, and that, because specifically because this comes with Flash. Um, one of the reasons why Linux Mint is pretty popular is because it has Flash Player installed on it, and um, you don't have to mess around with that, at least if you click this. If you don't click this, then Flash Player doesn't come, and uh, you got to install it manually, which is a pain in the butt, uh, especially if you need Flash, which, um, <laughs> I mean, no one should be using Flash, but, you know, you got to, there's, there's reasons. <laughs> All right. Uh, can I just go back and use the entire disk in the 60 gigabyte? I wonder. Can you tell that I rehearsed this? <laughs> yeah, this is just what I want. So entire disk, I just use my good old Western Digital. 60 gigabyte external hard drives that I've had for over a decade. <laughs> Select your time zone. I'm Los Angeles time. Uh, pick a username. We'll just call him <laughs> Mint Gamer. I should just do Johnny Thunder because I'm Johnny Thunder. Choose a password. We'll just do something really simple. Generally, you're going to want your password to be uh, strong. Uh, this one I'm going to log in automatically. Obviously, I'm just going to burn this, this system after we run through all the tutorials and stuff.
and now we just let it install. All right, uh, we are here now. Uh, this is what you should be greeted after you've completed the install process. Um, the only thing I've done is I had to install OBS, and for some reason it wasn't installing from the package, the Mint's package manager. So I had to install PPA, but that's uh, something we'll get into later. Actually, I think we'll get into right now, um, because... When you're greeted, you'll have the welcome screen. These won't be here. I had to add those, and this won't be here. But other than that, and this. Um, but other than that, um, you'll pretty much just get this. And you can see there's uh, first steps. Uh, one of the first steps you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do driver manager. We'll use our simple password. I almost forgot the password and had to reinstall. <laughs> had to watch the video again. Figure out what the password is. Um, oh, interesting. So, um, there's a couple ways to install the graphics driver. The easiest way is to go here. Um, this is assuming you have NVIDIA. If you have AMD, the graphics driver is already installed, but you do have to install Vulkan, which uh, I'm not going to go into that step. But uh, in order to install the NVIDIA drivers, uh, you pretty much just have to go here. And uh, 4.30 is fine. Uh, there is, I believe, a PPA if you want the latest and greatest drivers. For some reason it defaults to Yahoo. Can I even get there with that? PPA. Yeah, okay. Yahoo is decent. <laughs> um, so actually I will go through this step so to get the latest graphics drivers, if you want a version, you know, further up than uh, f 4.0, so I'll just close that. You open a terminal, you find what's called a, a PPA, which, um, shoot, I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but basically this is a, a community-driven um, package for distributing um, software. Uh, so you add the PPA, um, adding the PPA. So I just control C uh, and then in a terminal to cop paste, it's not control V, it's control shift V and then control shift C copies. So sudo app get repository PPA graphics drivers uh, PPA uh, then enter your password and then we'll ask if you want to do this you hit enter it adds the PPA sudo apt get update then you just update your uh, apt package manager and then I think if I relaunch the drivers manager now it should Yeah, so now I have uh, all the experimental drivers. Uh, so I guess we're going to go with the experimental 435. I'm actually running, I think, 430 on my computer. <laughs> uh, and then you apply changes. Yeah, while that's going, we can install Steam. So Software, ma actually, I think I'm already running the software manager, aren't I? No, I'm not. So in order to install Steam, uh, just go to Steam. Um, either one of these should work. Regular, regular Steam or the Steam for the flat pack. I'm just going to do regular. I 
it's probably a good time to mention uh, Lutris. So now the graphics driver is required. You do need to restart for graphics drivers because that's it's too low level for the system to upgrade it. Um, unlike certain software or most software on Linux, which you can upgrade just to upgrade, log out, log back in. But this one will require a, a reboot. So this is installing Steam um, and just do it through the software manager and bam. Uh, the other thing you'll want is, or you may want, is Lutris. I'm not going to get into Lutris in this video because I don't need to. Uh, but Lutris is um, essentially a very common, uh, it's a wine front end. All right, I got, I'm going to restart the computer. Um, I guess I'll have that show up. And when I come back, we will uh, have our graphics drivers installed. All right, everyone, we're back. Um, so at this point, uh, we should have our drivers installed. So, we go to drivers, do, 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 do. we got 435 installed and uh, we got Steam installed. So I already launched Steam. Um, one time and logged in, so it should automatically log me in. Did it not take or something? Okay, there it is. It's just the slow hard drive. Um, so what we need to install are, well, technically at this point, if you wanted to just play Linux native games, you're good to go. Um, let's see. So you'll notice that games like Rocket Lead, I can install this. Project Cars, uh, no, can't can't do that. Kerbal Space Program, that's a yes. Uh, and even games, some non-native games, like uh, the new Doom, uh, this will let you install because uh, Steam has whitelisted it for Proton. But what I want to focus on right now is Batman Goatee Edition, uh, which you'll notice it can't install. And that's because you need to go up into settings, uh, and under settings you need to go to Steam Play, and then you need to enable Steam Play for all titles. It'll ask you to restart, you restart, and then we will be able to install games like Batman Arkham Asylum Goatee Edition. And while that does that, we need Proton Tricks. Okay, so when you type in Proton Tricks into your preferred search engine, um, you'll generally pop up with this one. This one's no longer maintained, so you want so you want to go here, um, and I've found that the easiest way to install uh, for 
is via the pipx, which is the recommended way. So for Debian, the first thing you want to do is for Debian Mint Ubuntu, you want to put punch on this command that gets you all the prerequisites. So that's Control C, Control Shift V. Enter your password. And then yes. And then it does its thing. Uh, we're going to install Batman Goatee Edition. All right, so the prerequisites have installed. The next thing to do is to install pipx or pip. So you just copy these uh, commands. Enter. So that installed pip and virtual uh, env. And then to install Proton Tricks, oh, before we install Proton Tricks, we have to install something called Line Tricks. So to do that, we just type in sudo apt uh, get wine tricks. Is it? Might be because I need to install wine. I'm surprised. Okay. Install. Okay. So we'll install Wine Tricks. I don't think you need to install Wine, because what, what we want to install is Proton, and so we don't really care, I think, about Wine. In fact, I'm pretty sure I did this earlier and I didn't need to install Wine in order to get Wine Tricks to work. All right, so Wine Tricks is installed. So now we can install Proton Tricks. Uh, I need to close and open the terminal before I do that, as per the instructions here. So then we input pipx install proton tricks it does its thing all right so now proton tricks is installed um, so while we're waiting for uh, batman to install um, so the first thing i want to talk about is if you go to mouse and touchpad, there's a very annoying thing, especially if you're playing um, Skyrim, uh, which, in, at least in Linux Mint, this exists. It's emulate middle click by clicking both left and right uh, mouse buttons. So if you're trying to dual cast uh, if in, in Skyrim, you'll notice that it won't work, and that's because emulating middle click is on. So I recommend turning that off. Um, the other thing you want is you want to go to Windows. I know. The actual application is called Windows. And then in Behavior, under Special Key to Move Resize Windows, it's set to Alt. So if I hold the left Alt key and I click anywhere on this menu, you'll notice it'll move around. And this is fine behavior for most users, but if you use uh, Blender, which I do, uh, Alt is a modifier, and if you try and do something in Blender while you're holding Alt, it'll just move the screen around like this. So I like to disable this, and now if I hold Alt and try and do that, it doesn't work. And those are uh, two little finicky things about Linux that... Um, you can disable that uh, make it a lot more like a Windows experience or a, the expected Windows experience because I imagine you're going to be playing a lot of Windows games 
Um, I do. Um, so I want to cover programs when they're not working. All right. So to do this, first thing we need to do apt get install htop. For some reason, this version of Linux doesn't come with htop. It comes with, by default, a program called top. Um, and I prefer htop. I greatly prefer htop. I highly recommend htop. So the default task manager is top, and it looks like this, and it's kind of a mess to manage. Uh, I prefer htop. htop looks like this. And this is the reason why <coughs> you have to use a command line based uh, htop is because uh, when a program fails, like let's suppose uh, Firefox here is failing, what you um, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, the first thing you can do is if you can get to a command console, you can type in xkill, and this will turn your mouse pointer, as you can see, into a little X, and if I click on Firefox, it goes away. The other thing you can do is you can use top, or in our case, htop. So if you can get to htop, you type in Firefox, or you hit F4. So, sorry, I skipped a step. F4, that turns on your filter. Type in Firefox. Now everything related to Firefox is showing up over here. So I just hit F9 on one of these, I give it the SIG term, and you can see it disappears. Now the reason why uh, this is important, why HTOP, is because when the system hangs and you can't control anything, like suppose Firefox, bringing it back, is a game, and it's hung, and now I can't, for some reason, uh, control the computer, it's completely hanging on me. What you want to do is you want to hit Control L, F5, or any of the other F keys, really, except for F7. Um, I like Control F5, and that will open a terminal or a TTY client. And a TTY client uh, will pretty much look something kind of like uh, I said clear. Something like this, except it won't have any user interface. It'll just it'll open up and it'll ask uh, for your login. So you enter your login in this case Johnny Thunder, and then it'll ask you for the password. You enter the password, and then you'll get exactly what you're seeing here, uh, a command line, which you then use to launch HTOP, and then from there uh, you can close the program. Um, there's a couple other ways of closing programs that are pretty nifty. One of them is if you make a keyboard shortcut. So under shortcuts, I like to add a custom shortcut under the keyboard uh, menu. Add shortcut, and I like to call it xkill. And the command is xkill, no capitalization. So we add it, then we assign it, and I like Control Alt K or uh, cancel Control Alt K for for X kill. So now, anytime I hit Control Alt K, it brings up my little X, and I can kill Firefox that way or whatever program is is failing. So that's a nice, easy way to kill programs when they're not working. Um, and then the final uh, thing, which I just found out about today, <laughs> is uh, you can hit Control Alt Backspace, which I can't demonstrate here because what it'll do is it'll kill the desktop environment, and I'll essentially have to re-log in. Every application will close pretty much, and then I, I'll have to re-log into the computer. Um, but that essentially just kills your graphical interface. Um, it's kind of a last resort one. Um, so those are the ways that you deal with an unresponsive program. Um, 
So with that, I think we are just simply waiting around now for uh, Batman to install. Let me check my notes. Oh yes, uh, one thing to mention about the uh, the whole uh, alt thing is that a KSP, a uh, Kerbal Space Program, this one, um, this game, it, by default, it uses the modifier Alt on Mac and Windows, left Alt, for like duplicate and some other things, but on Linux it's right shift because of the Alt thing. Because of the Alt thing we disabled. So, since we disabled that, we have uh, controls more similar to what we would find on Windows. Um, and with that said, uh, we are just going to, uh, I'm going to cut the video here, and we'll come back when Batman is installed. Alright everyone, we're back, and uh, I realized I made a little error um, when I was explaining the HTOP thing. So, um, when you want to close a program and you want to get out you have to hit uh, or, or you want to open up a TTY client because your desktop environment is unresponsive you click on everything nothing's happening um, and then you hit control F5 and then you get the login uh, and so you log in blah 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 you get uh, you get this right and then you open HTOP top uh, and then you kill Firefox or whatever whatever the name of the application is and then you want to get out you hit uh, I, I forgot to mention you have to hit control F7 and that'll bring you back into your desktop environment okay so now uh, Batman is installed and if we launch Batman it will not work <laughs> Um, it'll get pretty far, but it will not run. And that's because we still have to tweak it. So, to figure out if we can run an application or not, uh, what we use is a community-driven database for Proton uh, called ProtonDB. So ProtonDB keeps a track of all of the Steam games that work and do not work with um, Linux. Uh, so in our case, we're looking for Batman. Or Batman. And you can see it's getting a silver with gold, gold, silver, and that's because in Proton Tricks we need to give it this command. Now, in order to use Proton Tricks, we have to run the game once, which is why we're going through the process, uh, of the install process. All right, so now that it's run through its process of installing stuff, if we try and play it, it will fail. So, as you can see, failed to compile global shader, blah, 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 blah. This just comes down to it not having the correct net framework, I believe, uh, or the DD, D3D uh decompiler so uh you can see this command it's kind of a little hard to see uh, so um yeah first one at least right now uh pretty much has the command proton tricks three five one four zero mdx uh etc etc so control C, uh, go over to a terminal, control V, and 
hit that. And so, just to explain a little bit about what's going on here, um, if we go to the local files, browse the local files of Batman. Uh, so, in our Steam Apps folder, above our common folder, there's the common folder that contains Batman, and then there's a comp data folder. And you'll notice this comp data folder has 35140. That translates to the uh, actual store number in Steam that Steam uses for its ID, 35140. And you'll notice that over in our uh, client when we entered the command to uh, fix it, we entered print on tricks 35140. So as long as you run the game once, uh, Proton Tricks will know. You just hand Proton Tricks the uh, particular number of the game and then followed by the Wine Tricks commands. Um, if you're doing Wine Tricks, let me just open them. Oh, wait, it's done. If you're doing wine tricks, which is wine tricks, instead of handing it the number of the uh, thing, of the game, before it you just say wine prefix. I think, I think it's, I think it's that equals, and then the location of the actual prefix. Which in this case, if we go to the comp data folder, we go into this folder, you notice this PFX file. This is your prefix. This is the actual C drive for the computer so in here uh, here's all your app data this would be your the prefix for Batman specifically so now that we've installed all of these uh, things there's two more commands that they recommend which is to disable eSync so we go over to Batman properties Local file or uh, general set launch options. Proton no async. I think that has to be equal one. I think that's the correct. And then proton use uh, dx equal one, I think. I think that's how it's supposed to be done. Or it might just be, uh, might just be that. I can't remember right now. I think this works. I want to say that that works. Oh, I don't think that's, I don't think I got that right. Now that I look at it, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to do this. I want to say I was supposed to do this. I think I actually don't have this set correctly for my, um, my regular game explains why it was crashing on me so much. All anyway, right, even if I didn't get that right, it will launch. So as you can see, um, Batman is working. I don't think you can hear the sound right now because I didn't set up the sound in um, OBS, but there is sound. So. Just to show that it is indeed working.
So as you can see, it's um, working pretty well. And uh, that is that. That is Batman Arcane Asylum working in Linux using Proton Tricks and Proton. Um, there is. I did want to briefly cover X3 Reunion because this is a native title that I had some issues with where um, for some reason none of the keyboard shortcuts were set. So I had to actually load a previous save and then go into the options and reset it to default. Um, I don't know why that happened. Alright, for the last part of this video I want to briefly go over uh, two more things. Um, one is, if you play a game like Deus Ex, uh, you're going to run into some issues. So you notice uh, everything is really dark. If we go into settings and we go to display and we adjust the brightness, you'll notice this does nothing. It's completely useless. Uh, and this happens a lot in these older games. So the workaround I've found, and this works across platform, is to use X Gamma. Dash Gamma. 1.5. Now you can't see it. But for me, everything is a lot brighter now. And I can I can see very well much better than I could before. Um and then just to reset it, you just set it to x gamma dash gamma equals zero. And that just resets it to zero. There is a way to add an option down here. Um, if you add applets to the panel, I think it's under downloaded. Yes. There's like a... Um, Brightness and Gamma Applet. If you download this one, manage, add it to, do I just, I just drag it, no, I plus it. That's right. If you add it down here, um, it'll let you adjust the brightness. Um, but it does need to be configured. So, minimum brightness, maximum brightness, 100. You actually want to crank that up to 150. I think the same is true of gamma. So now, if I go down here... Ah, there we go. So now I can crank this up to 150 if I wanted to, which again I think is something you can't see. Although that would be interesting if you can see that because that would definitely be the preferred way to do that for streaming. Um, Alright, so with that the other thing is discs. So if you have a drive on your computer. For example, I've got my Gamma drive, which is my biggest drive. Uh, when you, you want to use it, you can come over here and load it, but then you have to load it every time, which isn't very convenient, um, especially if you want to, you know, start playing your Steam games right away. 
Um, you can use the mount command, and it would be something like dev sdb3 uh, slash mount slash uh, one, two, three, four. I think it has to be sudo. Hopefully this won't kill the video right now. I can't remember what, what I'm supposed to set this for. Um, but that's close to how you would use the command. I, I, I It's been a while since I installed Arch. <laughs> and it's not the way I prefer to do it anyways in um, in Linux Mint. I prefer to use the disk utility and then if I want to make this drive mounted every time I can click on it. Here's my partition. I go over here, click come down here to edit mount options and then it's set for user session defaults. I turn that off and then it'll mount at system shard up, show user interface and then it'll mount point, it'll mount to mount DC blah 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 blah. Uh, I think if I just Oh, I didn't, I didn't input the command, so it's not there. Yeah, well, at any rate. Uh, and if I did that, I don't ask for the password. I input the password. And now this drive is here whenever I need it. So, that is, uh, or it will be there at startup. Um, well, I think... Uh, actually, that is pretty much everything I wanted to cover in this video, so um, thank you for watching the video, and I hope this helps you on your journey into Linux. Uh, I wish I kind of knew, or I wish it was uh, these things were pointed out to me uh, when I started using Linux. Uh, Alright, uh, have a good one. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>